Hey everybody, this is Bradley Benner with Semantic Mastery, and uh, I have a special guest on with me tonight, but I've also got Marco on to help me out with this and kind of just behind the scenes and keep me in line and keep our special guest in line as well. So, what's up, Marco? How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on? I might let, and, you, uh, I might let you give something away today. Uh, <laughs> he's going to try to uh, rein me in, but we've got Damon Nelson on with us of Vid Penguin fame. Sure, everybody's uh, familiar with Damon, especially in our uh, with our with our within our audience. And he's going to be talking tonight about his special his tool that is being released here. This is a special launch event that he's doing with us, kind of a pre-launch event because it fits so well with what you guys do. Uh, you know, from Hispanic Mastery Training with the IFTTT SEO Academy and so much of the stuff that we talk about. This tool that he's talking that he's going to reveal tonight and um, give you some training for as well is really really powerful, and I can see it being used and integrated with our IFTTT and blogging content marketing strategy in some very very powerful ways. So I'm quite excited about this. I actually got to play around with the software today and build some of my own feeds with that. Damon, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on tonight. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to uh, chat with you as well. So look, I know you've got a lot to get through, so I don't want to take up any of your time. Um, I'm just going to turn the floor directly over to you. One last thing before we get started, though, I just want to mention to everybody watching, if you guys um, have any questions, just post them on the events page. We will get to the questions at some point near the end. Uh, I don't want to interrupt Damon while he's going through his presentation, so just make sure that you post your questions on the page, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible towards the end, all right? So with that, Damon, take it away. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, this is going to be a little fun PowerPoint, and then I'm going to do a demo, and then I'm going to give away uh, some cheat sheets near the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I have a little game here for you, too. I think Marco said he was going to give away something. So I've got some animated GIFs in the PowerPoint, and if you can name all of them, I'm sure Marco – um, put them in the question box near the end. At the at the end, just write them down, and Marco may be able to give you a little prize or something for them. So let me get started here. Now I don't do um, this very much, so uh, uh, on Google Hangouts, <laughs> I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those go-to webinar guys. Okay, I think I'm. Can everybody see Kim Kardashian? Yes, very big. Okay. Uh, so my question is, is what do these three people have in common and how can they help you make money in, in just the next few hours? So that's the big question. So what I'm going to do is end. Um, let me hide this here. And if you'll stay to the end, I'll tell you exactly how you can get these controversial celebrities and sports figures to help you build automated posting machines. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Damon Nelson, and today I'd like to share a secret with you about how I'm able to create automated and recurring social posts literally within just minutes and using someone else's viral content. That's the important part. And their celebrity status. And Google actually loves you for it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're smart enough to also realize that only sending ads and spammy content to your social accounts is really the kiss of death. I love this little GIF here. <laughs> <laughs> and it will get you banned <laughs> quicker than anything. <laughs> we all know that social accounts are there to be social and not spammy. <laughs> and it's okay occasionally if you talk about a product or service that you like or recommend. And people expect that, we're marketers. But in between, you should fill your social accounts and blog with interesting, engaging, and shareable content. That is how you become successful with social media marketing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I discovered a foolproof formula that I'd like to share with you now. All right, here it is. It's simple RSS feeds. Google loves RSS feeds so much they bought FeedBurner a long time ago and they have their own feed reader. RSS feeds have been around for almost as long as the internet. RSS feeds provided, provide new content with every new post they create. 
RSS feeds are free for the most part. And the best part, you can virtually steal authority and backlinks using other people's celebrity status and page ranking authority. Fresh, contents, fresh content builds web traffic. Just keep this in mind throughout this presentation tonight. You want the freshest content. You want your, your posts, your social platforms to always be presenting new content that is viral, that's interesting and engaging. And that's what's gonna build your social authority. I found searching for RSS articles and previewing them first and then filtering them out with unre filtering out the unrelated feed posts it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> this was my excuse <laughs> at school, is the dog ate it. But it, it really is a, uh, it, it's a long laborious process to use feeds if you're doing it manually. So we solved the major hurdles using RSS feeds. We streamlined this entire process to just a few clicks. And if, if you're familiar with it, Penguin is we try to do everything within three clicks online. And that's the same as what we've gotten with this new product. We filter out all the unrelated junk, and then we combine these feeds into highly engaging, easily shareable super feeds is what we call them. And we've developed a very powerful online software that it's one of the easiest, set it and forget it. We don't want you to have to come into the software all the time, finagle around and do something. We want it automated, Bradley teaches a great way to automate everything with IFTT. And this is a, a match made in heaven almost, putting RSS feeds with IFTTT recipes. So social posting machines that you'll use, <laughs> that was supposed to be a sentence there. Within minutes, you can literally find the most popular RSS feeds on the internet based on any keyword. That's important there. And filter out any unrelated post. With TM, TMZ is one of my favorite RSS feeds to use because it has a lot of content, it's viral, it's engaging, and it, it covers everything. But you want to be able to filter it out. It's way too much information. It's like turning on a fire hydrant. You really just want to drink from the faucet. You want to blend in your own website content because why have a feed if you can't make money from it? And then you want to mash them all together so it varies the feed up into what we call the, the RSS super feed. The secret RSS creation tool will allow you to create quickly content, build page authority, and capture new leads on autopilot 24-7. A few minutes to set up. I want to give you something that no one else has ever done with RSS feeds. This is why we built it, and it's the money hook. This has been months in creating, and what if you could add your own content and links directly into a viral feed and make them blend in so perfectly that they look like they are all part of the same RSS feed post. <laughs> Introducing RSS Masher. It's the RSS super feeds with the first ever money hooks. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and demo the product now. So I'm going to switch over and I'm assuming. Oops. Come back here and screen share and. Yeah, and it's interesting because I was uh, playing with the software today, Damon, and uh, you know I, I found that the, the the whole hook angle that you've worked in that feature is incredibly powerful because that's something that we've not yet been able to do with feeds. And you know we teach a lot of how to use feeds for uh, using for for using other people's content and for um, adding relevant content to our networks and for automating and all of that, which is great, but the restriction has always been that we, you know, can use other people's content for certain things, but we haven't been able to insert our own links. And I love the fact that you've got this hook uh, feature worked in to where we can put any type of link we want directly into the feed. That's awesome. Well, thanks. I, I want to show you, I think this is one that I have set up with the hooks. 
um, no, that, I, I've been testing several different uh, sports betting tips. It's maybe. Okay. This is an RSS feed that I mashed together and I, I do uh, fantasy football. So what I do is I have a fantasy football league I'm a part of and I've been building this RSS feed to populate some of my uh, social accounts. And so what I have is everyone, this is one of my money hooks right here, but it looks like it's exactly part of the feed. Can y'all all see that? It, you, you can't tell where my feed where my posts or my hook ends and the regular description begins. So this is what a feed looks like and everyone to create your own fantasy sports site. I've only made one sell off of this one RSS feed, but the sell is $295 is my affiliate commission. So this one feed just by creating it and putting this little money hook in there has already made me money. And it's, being posted on social sites. So I'm going to, I think I've had it up for like three months now. And so this is our feed right here. And then um, get official NFL jerseys right here. If you click that, that actually goes to one of our affiliate promotions also. So when they order jerseys, this cookie stays in place for 24 hours on NFL shop. So they could order their whole family football jerseys or or sweatshirts or t-shirts and I make money off of that. It's only 8% like Amazon, but it's, it's still a great income for around Christmas time. Yeah. That's kind of an example of what we're going to be doing. And here's how easy it is to create a mash. And we call them mashes and we're going to go in and search for an RSS feed. Like I told you, there's, I like bleacher report as an example. And the reason is, is I know it has, uh, good content in the feed itself. Bleacher Report, there's YouTube. And so this was where I was spending a lot of time looking for RSS feeds. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it to the mash and let's come down and let's put ESPN in there also. You can put in as many as you want and you'll have your own style with this. Football news and scores. Um, NFL draft. So I'll just put that in there. Okay. Then internal is internal or feeds that you've already created. You can add and blend those back in there. So if I want to put my, um, I have putting secrets. I, I did some golfing stuff, but you can add in um, other feeds, popular NFL feeds. So I'm going to grab that one in there feeds added in there and that's as simple as it is now if you don't if you can't find it in search you can actually paste it right in here this is where you put your your own website your clients website RSS feed so it's real easy to drop a feed in here from a any website that you have that has a verified RSS feed now here's the other beauty of it is YouTube Used to, you'd have to go figure out what your YouTube RSS feed in was based off the channel. Well, we've done all that hard work for you. So if you want to just copy your YouTube channel, now more, more than likely what you're going to do if you're doing NFL football, I'll just type in NFL highlights. Because again, I'm trying to fill my social network on my fantasy league with interesting content, not necessarily my my business site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the NFL channel. This is where I'm borrowing their authority. So let's grab NFL films here. That's a good channel right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab that. I'm back over to RSS Masher, paste that channel in there, hit my enter key. And there, so right now I'm borrowing the authority of the NFL Films, Bleacher Report, and ESPN. I couldn't think of any, any three higher authorities to paste into an RSS feed. So I added that. Now here's the simple part. You go into settings and you name it.
And as being marketers, we want to be creative. You want to put in a catchy name, something that somebody might pick up an RSS feed from. And to best NFL. Okay. Now, if all we're looking for, let's see what it looks like right now. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Y'all see kind of how easy this is. It's just follow the, the tabs going across. Now let's hit preview. Okay, so there's the YouTube NFL film. Uh, this is from Bleacher Report. So all this content right here, it is an actual RSS feed. I'm going to come back over here to my dashboard and we'll just look at it as an RSS feed. So if you have a social network of any type whatsoever, you can drop this in and start building it. Or you can actually take it into your own WordPress site. If you're doing a WordPress site on, for instance, on fantasy uh, football. Uh, you can burn it up to FeedBurner, and you can index this through FeedBurner too, and there's a lot of people that pick them up through FeedBurner. But this is, this is the content that we're talking about, viral social content from page authority sites. We're, we're borrowing from NFL Films, Bleacher Report, and ESPN. And that's how easy it is to use RSS Masher. Now, here's something that we've, that we've added. If you want to create a WordPress site from scratch with a lot of valid viral content posts, all you do is export this to WordPress and it, and it exports to a WordPress XML file. You just simply click that, hit save. Then you go in and create your WordPress um, account and you'll go into import and do an RSS feed import. And in fact, I don't think I have my, my WordPress accounts up. I don't want to. But basically, we show you in training how to import this in. And it's just simply finding it, clicking on it, and say import. And it will import all those feeds you just saw on this RSS feeds and create blog posts with it. So. Huh. You can create a complete WordPress site with all this content immediately. So how I would you saw, like... I saw, I saw that feature in there today. I was wondering what the export was for to WordPress, but that makes sense. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, right here, we've probably got 30 articles. So that means that you're going to have 30 blog posts to a WordPress site. You can do this and, I mean, basically, to once you have your WordPress set up, you just hit import. And you bring that one XML file in and it's going to bring pictures and everything else in it. And so that's how easy it is to set it up. Now, if you want to come back, we're going to come back in just a second and show you how to edit the mash, but you could turn it on or off and you can ping it. So we have set up a basic ping and basically all we're doing is we're taking this URL, we're sending it to backlinks indexer and link processor. And these guys will notify all the pingers, all the indexer services, and then they'll actually crawl through that. So you're actually getting link juice off of these indexed uh, feeds. Now, what we're adding to it, and this is probably about 30 days away, is if you hit ping, we're also going to take this feed, whatever you named it, and let's go back here is you named it NFL Fantasy Picks. We're gonna actually create a, a page and have all these links. So whenever you ping, we're just gonna add that link to this WordPress site. And we're gonna take all the blog posts or the uh, feed posts and create blog posts for you inside of a massive WordPress site. And then we're going to go out to our SendWire accounts, our IFTT accounts, and we're going to build up the page authority of one WordPress site. And by doing that is you're, we're going to be building a lot of backlink juice for you on just a regular basis. And all you had to do was click that one button to do all that. Then if you want to completely delete it, you just delete it. And that's how simple this really is. Uh, now you won't see this. I'm, I'm the admin, so I, I see this, but the, these are the only two buttons you use. Now let's go back and talk about 
filtering. Everything's down in your settings. So let's say that we want to only talk about, uh, I live in Dallas, so of course we're only going to talk about cowboys today. <laughs> so I'll hit enter. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a global filter. Now you can do filters on each feed if you want to do that, but I'm, I'm looking for cowboys on my entire super feed. So let's go up and see on preview what it looks like. Okay, it doesn't look like we brought any cowboys up on that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in the description part. Sometimes you have to play with it there. Okay, so it's only going to bring up cowboys that are in the description of the actual feed posts themselves. So that's the beauty of what we're doing here is if I want a WordPress site that I want to create just for Dallas Cowboys. I just created that. So all these articles have something to do with the Dallas Cowboys. And that's, that's pretty slick because if you had to do this manually, it would take you forever. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to delete it, you can just hit X to delete. Now down at the bottom here is we give you, you can put a minus in there. So if you don't want anything to do with the Redskins at all, just the Cowboys, you would put minus Redskins. And let's preview it. So it's going to, it's going to keep all the feeds that have Cowboys, but don't have Redskins in them. So it kind of narrowed this down just a little bit. And that's really all there is to create the mash and to do the filter. But let me show you the real power of this is I'm going to come in here. We talked about the money hooks just briefly. I showed you what they look like. So let's go in and you can do a global so that every feed post has the same one. So I'm just going to say money hook top and you can format them if you want. Let's give them a heading two. And this is how you put your link in there. I'm just going to say money hook top and I'm just going to make hook. And just the generic Google. Um, target, you may want to actually go in a new window. And you can put a image in there. Now, the way that we do images is you have to have them hosted somewhere online, either in your WordPress account or uh, on Amazon or even uh, uh, Google, uh, Google Docs. You can put that source in there. We don't do an upload. But you can, you can really build this out. Now, I'm going to put money hook bottom just so we can see what it looks like. And I don't know if anybody still actually uses... Uh, well, I know they, they still use Bing. Let's just do bing.com. And now you can also truncate long posts. So if you have Bleacher Report, when they do their fantasy uh, draft picks, some of these summary posts can be 20 pages long. So you want to truncate, and then you would just type in the maximum post characters in there. But let's see what this looks like now. Okay, here's the, the post title. Here's our money hook. It's right on top of the image. And there's our money hook bottom. Yeah, it's crazy. And so this goes over to your social networks. Now, what you want to, there, I have noticed there's a few IFTTs that sometimes it won't, it, it strips that out but I think you can actually custom write them in there. So if, if you see it stripping it out for like Tumblr. Um, and I, I use, I primarily push them into Twitter, Tumblr, um, Facebook. I think I, I, I even do Reddit occasionally. Uh, but I use a lot of mine for Sinwire. So I'm actually feeding this entire feed over to Sinwire, but I use it to fill, I use all my IFTTT recipes to fill up all my 
minion accounts, basically. So this is, that's how you do it. I mean, it's not complicated at all. I, I'm sure there's a lot of questions coming in and we'll hit them at the end. Uh, but you can see, you know, it, you can leave these running all the time. In fact, I had one in here. I don't see if this life hacks. I think that was, no, nope, that wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of feeds in that dashboard, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one's uh, best post on TMZ. So this just keeps on posting. And, and this was an example I did uh, for our other group. Um, hook, hook before description, always the best links go here. And of course, that's gonna, I, this was my vid penguin group. So I took them over to vid penguin. I'll hop out of that. And then you have your read more uh, down here. And then this is the bottom hook right here. And these TMZ feeds, they just get picked up all the time. And the beauty about this is when, you, when you're kind of stealing authority, make your, come in here and make your title sexy. Kim Kardashian after she got robbed. And you want to like vampires suck. You know, you want it to be confrontation, uh, not confrontation, you want it to be something that is intriguing and interesting so that somebody will pick this up because that's how people shop for RSS feeds and feed burner. Um, and, you know, so that's how you would name your feed here. Um, Major League Baseball All-Stars. Somebody picked this up too, and I've made some money off my, um, my baseball jersey sales. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do RSS feeds. And, and you know, this is not a complete training on how to use the mash, but there's a few little tricks that we still have uh, in there, but it's really that simple to use. Yeah. And from a standpoint, if you don't mind me jumping in, Damon, for a minute, um, the, the, where I see how powerful this is, is guys, a, a lot of you on the call are, uh, you know, IFTTT SEO members. Um, I have TTSEO Academy members and we talk about in the Academy the two tiered networks which we use mainly for YouTube and in part the reason I've been preaching for well over or about a year now uh, about not using two tier networks for money sites is because there is a footprint footprints don't affect YouTube but they do with the money sites right so you want to be very careful with using your blog your clients blog your money site whatever as a uh, to feed a two tier network because of the footprint issues on the second tier. The first tier is not a footprint issue because it's a branded tier. It's just an extension of your brand. It's logical and normal for you to share your own content on your branded properties. But on the tier two stuff, which are usually persona based networks, you don't want to just syndicate your own content to those because that's clearly a footprint, right? And so we talk about on the second tier networks is integrating if you're going to use that method, which I don't haven't suggested. Uh, up until this point, because it's kind of a pain in the ass to set up multiple triggers, right, for various related content sources, because you want to continually feed additional content to your second tier networks to, to number one, minimize the footprint, because now your links from your content are buried amongst other posts from other related content, which will help to theme the networks help to borrow authority like what Damon's been talking about uh, and siphon authority off of those content feeds that you're using. But it also is to, pre, you know, kind of minimize or reduce your footprint. But I've always mentioned that like using like three content sources and there was never really any good feed splicers out there where we could add all, you know, mash feeds together to use one feed to feed those tier two networks. Well, Damon's product here, RSS Masher, gives us that ability. But the cool part about it is not only can we splice feeds together and now populate our tier two networks with additional content, but we can start getting our links into that content. And we can send links, you know, through the hooks that he's just de demonstrating here, either to our offer pages or our opt-in pages, or we can use those links for backlinks instead right? So we can build links to pages or posts on our, on our money site and all of that using other people's content in an automated fashion, which is what two second tier networks are for guys, right? And so uh, I can see how RSS Master could be really, really powerful for being able to 
set up second tier networks for blog syndication now and make it a lot easier and safer than it has been up until this point. So sorry to steal a show from you for a minute. <laughs> Damon. No, no, you couldn't have said it any better. Uh, um, and I also wanted to point out is you don't have to use global hooks or, or better yet, you can use global hooks. And this is just an example here. Uh, this is, so this is the global hook, but each of your feeds could have a different hook. So that those feeds would fall underneath this money making. So I, what I will say here is NFL rush money hook up. And just to make it easy to see, I'll, I'll do it as heading one and So if you don't want to to hammer one specific social network, you can you can mix everything up um, and have like this one go to your Facebook links or and you could also put in here. This is what I love: sponsored. I hope I spelled it as sponsored by rssmasher.com. Google loves this link right here. It's because it says sponsored by. It's not, you're not, you don't have your call to action built into it, but this is a great link to do right there. And then you just link it up. And if you want to put some spacing, you can always, you know, add some spacing in there. And when you go to the individual feeds here, you can, if they don't have enable read more tags inside of the uh, summary post, you can add them right here. You can also pin them at the top of your summary post. Some, somebody asked for this, and I, I'm not for sure exactly what he's talking about, but it's, if you're delivering a summary post, is you can actually make sure that instead of mixing them all together, NFL Rush is going to be at the top of all the summary posts. And then the other is if you want to remove all formatting and links from both the viral and the money hooks, you would do this right here. And that would take out all formatting, all links, make everything look very generic. And again, somebody asked for that. So we added that in there. And I think what they were doing is building some uh, XML sites uh, off of it with some um, RSS ground feeds. So anyway, this is, and let me just show you what this is going to look like. So NFL Rush has money hooks. Nobody else does. And I'll just hit save. Hit preview. Hit preview this time. So let's go down and look to see it. NFL Rush, I may have, yeah, there, there we go. So you can kind of see it's, it's in there. There's quite a few right there for NFL Rush. So it gives you the ability to just kind of alternate things up on your mash. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it adds diversity. Yep, yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop back to the PowerPoint and then I'll show you everything else that we're going to get with this here. And slideshow from current slide. Okay, so we did the demo. So it's it's online. It's an online software. You don't have to download anything. All the updates we, we do for you automatically. It can be used on any computer, and I use it on my iPad all the time. And of course, <laughs> love that, Jeff. Uh, it gives you, it, it gives your social accounts some of the highest consumed content online today. You, you saw just how I use ESPN, Bleacher Report, and NFL Films. Those are some of the highest page ranking sites uh, for NFL sports. And we don't just stop with the software. We're also including some very extensive training and case studies. And we do a step-by-step -step video walkthrough and we'll have you up and running very quickly. As you can see, it doesn't really take that long. You just kind of play around with it. And We'll have you up and running. There's old Rocky. And you can become a social posting expert within a few hours. 
We have a private Facebook group to share expert tips, best practices, and I also share, um, I've got some cheat sheets I'm going to share with y'all at the end of my top 25 favorite social content feeds. Are we supposed to be seeing a presentation, by the way, Damon? Yeah. Because well, we're still seeing your dashboard. Okay. Well, then, good. I, I didn't mess any, anything up, <laughs> <bad>, did I? <laughs> No, just hit the stop. I'll go back up to your screen share button, click on that, and you should be able to select a different window. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. Okay. We started here, so can you see it now? Oops. Yes, we can see. We're seeing. We're not seeing it in presenter view, but that's fine. Um, that's fine the way that it was. Okay, let me get to where we have to go back through here. Okay, we're gonna start right here from current slide. Okay, can you see that now? It's demo time. No, not yet. It's back on your camera again, so you might have to select the window again. We had it just a minute ago. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah. well. Now I'm seeing uh, your text pad, notepad file. Okay. Some notes. Let's try this. And I should be able to switch over here. Can you see? Now, that? Yeah, that's fine. Just like that. I okay. would leave it just like that. Because now we're looking at your from presenter view now too. So that's good. You're good to okay. go. Perfect. Okay. So it's online. It can be used on any computer or tablet. See, I didn't hear anybody laughing earlier. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gives you your social account, some of the highest consumed content online. And we don't just stop with the software. We're also including training, case studies, and a step-by-step walkthrough. And we're going to get you up running very quickly. There's a Rocky there. And so you become a social media expert within a few hours. Again, we, we do have a private Facebook group to share tips and best practices. And you all also receive some of the bonuses that are going to give you a huge leg up, including there's a complete mini course on what is a RSS feed. These feeds and we'll reveal five unique different feed aggregation sources that you can bring in into your mash and how to make money using them. How to import these RSS super feeds into your WordPress. We show you how to do this and a WordPress plugin that you can use immediately. In fact, uh, this is Semantics WordPress plugin, where it creates full posts out of these feeds. And, yep, we create full posts. And finally, our last bonus, and probably the most popular, is how to monetize your feeds. And that's my favorite video there. <laughs> All you need to do is click the buy button now. Now, we don't have a buy button here, so we're about to show you that yeah, I'll drop the link on the page, guys, and then um, also from um, you know we'll put it in, we'll put it with the replay, and I think Damon might be showing a slide here with it in just a moment. Damon, did you have that or not? If not, that's fine. I can yeah, I've got the slide at the very end. Uh, okay, that's fine. One. Then then we'll just carry on, guys. I'm going to drop the link on the uh, the event page, and I'll drop it a couple times while he's finishing up his presentation. Also, like I said, it'll be in the replay. Okay, uh, this is a limited release. We're only going out to internet marketers with this. Um, so I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. And we have a satisfaction guarantee. Uh, try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it, just ask for a refund. I have no problem kicking your refund back. Um, we have three different pricing levels. I've got a basic, a pro, and an agency. We put the agency in because we do have some marketing agencies actually using the software. And they, they're they the ones causing us to delay, delay this initial launch was we, we were – 
amping up the servers and getting everything ready to handle larger agencies. So um, this is a do it now. Oh yeah, I promise if you stay to the end, I'd get you these three celebrities to endorse your feed post. Well, here's how it's done. You crank up RSS Master and you grab a TMZ feed. And you're gonna look just for Kim Kardashian or just put Kardashian in the description of just that feed. Then you grab a Huffington Post feed and put Trump in there and an ESPN feed. And you put the former, I guess that's former San Francisco quarterback Kaepernick in there. Then you put the names in a filter, add your own feed and put your money hooks in there. Give it a good name and save it and voila, you have you a RSS master super feed. <laughs> and Kim said she loved RSS Masher and you will too. Okay, before I go uh, tonight, I wanted to give y'all three uh, cheat sheets and I'm gonna give you the links um, in just a second here. But I have, this is actually in the course itself. It's 10 best places to find RSS feeds. All these are linked in here. And then I have my top 25 favorite social content feeds. These are ones I've done a lot of research. They all have good content in the summary feed. And that's what you're looking for. It's not just some really thin summary post. You want a feed that has a lot of content. Lifehacker, and all these are good viral content. Uh, this Twisted Sifter, um, this has some really weird stuff in there. And, you know, you might be, uh, you might not put this in your uh, normal feeds, but just save this and make it your own separate RSS master feed. And then here's 20 easy ways to implement these RSS ideas. Definitely Facebook, Twitter content, Sendwire, uh, content farms, RSS to IFTT accounts. This is, I use this a lot. And you can also do an RSS to emails. Mm -hmm. uh, Get response, Aweber, all these email autoresponders have this service. So before we get to questions, I want to drop, this is the, the link, semanticmastery.com slash RSS masher special. And then what I'm gonna do is, I will pull this notepad over here. Yeah, if you wanna copy those URLs and drop them in the chat box for me, um, I'll paste them on the event page. Okay. There you go, you're getting the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. See, you're a go-to webinar guy, apparently, huh? And see, yeah. that's I feel like you do when I'm on go-to webinar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got those. I'll post those on the event page. Yeah, it's, it's so funny using these two different platforms. Is they're they're really kind of uh, uniquely different. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's okay. I think we got everything there. Yep, we're good. Um. I don't know how to see questions. Do I go to a Q and A or uh, question section? Yeah, you uh, you should be able to see it on the event page. I'll drop that in um, the the chat for you. Give me one second, and then um, I've got. I don't. There's not a whole lot of questions because we're having some uh, streaming issues. I guess YouTube stream the buff. There's buffering live, which is fine because the replay will come back through as uh, 720p. So. There's not a whole lot of questions, but there is a couple things I want to talk about here in just a moment. I'm going to drop this event page in the Slack chat, or excuse me, the chat for you. Um, Damon, if you want to click on that, you can look directly at the uh, questions, but I'm going to go through. Uh, will there be a replay for this? Yes, there will be a replay. Let's see what else we got. Just a second, I'm going through. We've got comments, so... Yeah, guys, the playback issue will be resolved with uh, the replay. I don't know. Maybe YouTube servers are overloaded right now. I can't imagine that being possible, but maybe. Who knows? Kurt Gurman asked, aren't RSS feed posts all duplicated content? 
And I respond, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it too, Damon, but I already replied via uh, a text back to him and said that no, duplicate content only pertains to content on the same domain, guys. Duplicate content only pertains to content on the same domain. If duplicate content was an issue when it was shared, then any, or if duplicate content on other domains was an issue, then every time somebody shared content, it would be harming the content publisher, right? So every time a post was shared on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of those, or any time a press release was published and distributed and, and republished by a bunch of different uh, media outlets, that would be duplicate content and it would ultimately harm the original publisher, right? And so, no, duplicate content is not, it, it only pertains to the same domain. Specifically, if you're linking back to the source or giving attribution, which with RSS Master, that link or that checkbox at the bottom of each feed section, uh, where you can say uh, enable the read more button, will automatically insert a link back to the original content source for that post, right? So it links back to the post, which is what you want, because now you're giving basically attribution as to where the content came from. Um, Damon, do you want to comment on that? No, that that's the same thing I was going to say. Is we we provide attribution if and there's a lot of there's a lot of feed posts. You do this enough. They don't even put their link in for attribution on there. And it's yeah. built into the, it's actually built into the title of the feed post. Uh, so by checking this is you can, you, you satisfy every Google command right there by checking right. that enable read more because this carries the link back to the original article and feed burner was built on this whole premise is you're going to summarize all the posts and you, you reference back to the original article. That's correct. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's see. <laughs> he says, because of the buffering issue, Ganty says, Damon must be on to something that Google does not like. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's see. Ganty's a vid penguin. <laughs> okay, so Lakeside Digital Marketing says, as far as monetization, would you recommend AdSense? No. I wouldn't either. <laughs> no. I was going to say no, but I wanted to hear you. Uh, yeah, guys, no, I mean, it, uh, you know, I, I guess you could in a way if you were setting up like your own auto blogs that you could put AdSense on and stuff like that. I suppose you could. It's not a method I would use because I just don't do AdSense at all. Um, I don't think there's enough money in it. I, I mean, I know there's some people killing it, but personally, I've never done it. But, I, you know, I don't I don't know how much, um, because I don't do it enough, I don't know if AdSense like auto blogs would get your account suspended or what. I have no idea. Yeah, what I do is I just go out to the affiliate networks and just find, in fact, this is a clickbait product. I want to show you this one right here that I've made almost $300 on. And literally, it took me very very little time. Um, let's see if the price, yeah, this is straight ClickBank. So it, you don't even have to ask for approval. You're automatically approved on this. Uh, but it's, I love it when they say get a quote, because when they say get a quote, that means the price is really expensive. <laughs> but by now, uh, let's see what the pricing is. 297 US, it's a one-time fee. And the, the upgrade to it is like $1,900. Wow. So I think I may have actually sold two of these because it's a 50% fee on there. So, you know, ClickBank is a great place to uh, JVZoo. You could put any affiliate link you want in there. And basically all you're doing is you're just putting it in the money links. But you want, to, you want your money links to say something like this. Click here for our favorite software. Start earning money today. These are all marketing terms. Just highlight them, stick your link in there. Yeah. Yeah, guys, think about that. I mean, that's what Damon's showing here is that you can link. If you're thinking about it from a traffic standpoint, using these um, this content and the RSS masher to generate auto, auto, you know, auto blogging and generating traffic, be, especially when you're leveraging like trending topics and, uh, you know, um, popular content and that kind of stuff, then now you can send traffic to wherever you want. You can send it direct to a sales page through an affiliate link. You know, I would recommend sending it to some sort of opt-in page or something where, you know, a bridge page between the affiliate, that, that and the affiliate offer so you could capture emails, but you could also send uh, traffic, you know, to direct to like, uh, you know, client sites or whatever, using, using these sites as feeder sites, like in other words, traffic feeder sites. 
But you can also use this these feeds specifically just for SEO. My point is you can also put your links into these posts and now you're siphoning uh, uh, authority, relevant authority from, because it's topically relevant, you set all that up through the filters, right? You selected the feed, set it up through filters, so now it's topically relevant and it's high authority, engaging and probably socially pop uh, active. And now your link is directly associated by proximity <laughs> Uh, all with that other content. So you're going to siphon authority. So, you know, there's the best of both worlds. You get the traffic aspect of it, plus you get the SEO aspect of it. Yep. And and here's the neat thing, guys, too, is, you know, with all the tools out there right now, you could actually send them to a, um, a fun little survey. Like, if, if we're still talking about sports betting here, is that's mine, that's my link. Um, I love this one right here, NFL jerseys here. But you can put a picture in here and make it like a, a picture poll. Like, for instance, is uh, AFC versus NFC. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? And just have, have – once they click on that image, it would take them to a poll, run through several micro-commitments through there, and then you get a retargeting pixel assigned to them. You don't even have to ask for their email. That's you can right. Start marketing to them on Facebook without ever grabbing an email. Now at the end of your survey, after the end of your game or your contest there, you would definitely ask for an email, but if they don't give it to you, you've just retargeted them. So get them out of the, you know, get them out of TMZ or ESPN or uh, pull them out of those posts or pull them out of wherever this, blog ends and put them into your site. That's the, that's the trick to it. And, and, and like Bradley said, it could be a bridge page. It could be a, a leadpages.com. You know, there's so many different ways. You have a URL that's going to be sitting on somebody else's page because they picked it up because they want information about the NFL or um, fantasy draft, or it could be anything that you're, you know, you're talking about. I have, a blog post or blog that's about gluten free. Um, my friend is, uh, she's gluten free, so she wanted some gluten free tips. So I had this on a feed burner, and I, I think I've had 100 people pick up the actual feed burner. I'm, I'm keeping track of it. And all they're doing is they're just reading the feed. They have a feed reader on their uh, Firefox. Yeah. And I, I don't think I've even put it in any blog post anywhere. So it's there's so many opportunities with RSS. It's been around forever. There's no, you know, it's it's easy to use basically. Yeah, I got two questions here, Damon. Uh, the first one is um, from Kurt, and then I'll get one. Walt, I see your question too. I'm coming to you, buddy. Uh, Kurt says, "I get the idea. How do you get the mash posts onto your social sites like Twitter and Facebook?" But correct me if I'm wrong, Damon. They're 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 not mash masked posts that get syndicated. They're the individual posts from within the feed that each get syndicated as their own posts, correct? Yes. Yes. Right. And and it's you're using IFTTT to or, or Sendwire, one of the two, they're aggregate they're taking that summary feed post and that's your that's your trigger point. And every time a new post inside of your RSS feed comes up, it's going to create a Twitter account or it's going to create a Twitter post or a Reddit post or a Facebook post. Yeah, so the syndication, Kurt, is occurs because uh, you use a trigger uh, um, application such as IFTTT or SendWire or whatever to where every time, all that does is it basically monitors the feed. And every time a new item is detected in the feed, it triggers the app to, to create a post, to cross post or syndicate, right? To Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or um, not not so much YouTube, but um, WordPress, Blogger, Tumblr, any one of those. So the RSS feed actually causes the trigger for the syndication. And uh, each post within the feed will get republished as its own post with your webhooks included. Yeah, and let me let me add to this too, is uh, I've got, this is a strategy is, when you're looking for um, these viral feeds to to piggyback on, make sure they come out fairly frequently. You don't want a, a, a viral feed that only comes out once a month. TMZ comes out 12 times a day. And um, so the, the cheat sheet I gave you, 
these come out all the time. In fact, some of them come out way too much. <laughs> but, you know, and here's another uh, trick. I use RSS Ground. And RSS Ground has the ability to bring in Amazon products based on what you, you choose. So if it's, let's, NFL football, you can bring in Amazon products and they create little feed posts for each Amazon product as, as they're being added to Amazon. So you could actually blend that in with your NFL uh, feed. Now, you do want to, RSS Ground will, or Amazon will, you know, submerge you with feed posts. So you want to kind of choke it down on RSS Ground before you bring it into RSS Masher. Gotcha. All right. The next question comes from Walt and he says, uh, and so he's, he's asking you to sell them. <laughs> he says, uh, Damon, sell me on the agency version over the pro version. Well, if, if what you're doing is an internet marketer buy the pro version, I, I don't want to sell you the agency version because that's way too much. But if you've got, um, probably 25 clients, they have, um, 20 different social sites, and then you're going to be adding, you know, 10 new clients a month, you need the agency package yeah. because then you'll have a thousand active feeds. And guys, look at this is you can turn off active feeds. Watch this. I've got total of 30 feeds in here and 24 active, 23 active. So if you find that a feed's not working for you right now, or, or let's say it's a summer based uh, it's about baseball. I probably should come back in here and turn off my baseball one because there's not going to be any content in there. Um, so you can kind of manage it yourself. And this is an upgrade button. If it says 100 and you're getting right, you're at 99 and you want more, you would click on that. I think we've got it set up. Yeah, it goes to the upgrade offer. And then walk buy it at that time. You know, buy it once you see you have 99 in there. I, I mean, I don't want you to buy something you don't need yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Let me uh, see if we've got any other questions. I, I don't really see any other questions at the moment. Yeah, G Ganty has, has a question towards the top. Uh, so I'm assuming that this is not a brand new course, correct? No, this is something you've been working on for over a year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And no, but again, what, what he wants to know is, 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 is if he has it already, if, if, if uh, since he's in Vid Penguin and he's bought other things, is this similar to something that he might have in his arsenal? So he's probably wondering, should he, should he buy it or shouldn't he? Well, Ganty, if you already have RSS Masher, you got grandfathered in as a pro. So you're going to already have the pro version. Uh, but if you don't, you, you know, you, you need to buy it. <laughs> yeah. And there the you training, guys, is I have it's very extensive training, and we are uh, actually Bradley and I are both putting on. If you buy this, you're going to get automatically registered for a webinar on the 21st. Um, I think it's automatically. If if not, it's it, it's on the registration link when you buy this. But it's on the 21st, and we'll send out notices on via email. Uh, but I'm going to go in and, and build just like I just did is I'm going to build specific feeds for the new year and I'm going to get a, a couple of different trending terms and I'll build the feeds and then Bradley's going to show us how he's going to take the feeds and put them into IFTTT. Yeah, second tier triggers mainly guys. That's what I was talking about earlier on this webinar and I'm going to demonstrate that uh, on the webinar on the 21st. Yeah, and, and just for Kurt, because he's he's still wondering, you know, uh, to how how to distribute. I mean, th that's what we do, Kurt. Ifttt SEO. We we have a whole course on on how to take your content and syndicate it to your social media properties. That's what we've been talking about when we say Ifttt distribution. It's a our course is called Ifttt SEO. In case uh, you want to take a look at it. But yeah, that the, the question he asks is, is or uh, it's kind of a question slash statement is so RSS Master hijacks a live RSS feed, inserts your contents and links, then through IFTTT or SendWire distributes the post, and that is correct, Kurt. You've got it. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, Walt says, wow, thanks for the honesty. I'm going to plus one that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Damon's a good dude. He wouldn't sell you on something you don't need. I can tell you that. And uh, Lakeside says, uh, any, did, any upsells? Oh, guys, I, I hate upsells, um, but there is one upsell, and you don't need it to run the software. It's, it, we did a uh, four-week mastery course, a mastermind uh, course, and I, I want to say it's $77. It's called RSS Mastermind, and it's just it's more training on strategy of how to use the RSS to, to monetize and how do you use it to make money. There were a lot of questions early on about how do you build WordPress sites. So that's what we do is we go in and we build WordPress sites for you. And guys, if you want WordPress sites, you know, back in the, in the good old days when we had blogger farms, I would have loved to have this um, to mash up a whole bunch of viral content, spit it into a WordPress site and put AdSense on it. Yeah. Um, but those days are gone. Now. <laughs> but you still need content in your WordPress site. And this is a great way to fill in the blog side of your WordPress to do SEO with it. And the, the cool thing, and Bradley, you probably picked up on it too, is let's say you have one about the gluten-free lifestyle and you wanted some viral content that you could populate your blog post and just keep building it out. Those triggers, they don't have to be outbound of the WordPress. You can actually put your, your money hooks and reference a sales page inside of your own blog post. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you could, you could use it if you were going to be feeding the, uh, like a, a, a site with a feed, then you could essentially use uh, the hook section to create internal links for your own site to kind of help SEO the site. Um, so, and guys, you know, those of you that are in IFTTT SEO Academy, we had the bonus section, which was Advanced RSS Academy, and that, but that was specifically and solely for the purpose of SEO, and uh, it wasn't for monetizing the feeds or for driving traffic. It was a cent It was again solely for SEO. That that whole module. This is a way to monetize those feeds, uh, generate, and also to push traffic to places that you want that would you know that you select. So this takes it to a different, a whole other level that we weren't able to provide because we didn't have a feed masher like, like this. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Marco, do you have any questions for Damon? No, no, I'm good. Okay, Damon, do you have any other questions? Um, by the way, guys, I wanted to mention, you know, we're doing the, uh, the webinar. The, the, uh, so the bonus from us is I'm, I'm jumping on a webinar with um, Damon, and we're going to be, I'm going to be demonstrating how using the IFTTT networks, especially tier two networks now, can be done with RSS Masher and, and money sites. And that's what I'm going to be demonstrating going through that. And uh, there will probably be some additional training videos to go, like, you know, for, for you guys to be able to take back that end up purchasing um, so that you can follow along step by step on how to set that up for tier two networks. Yep. Guys, thank you all for having me on. I really appreciate it. And Bradley, I I always learn something every time I talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damon, we appreciate having you on, man. Uh, again, there was some latency issues, I guess, with the uh, Hangout, but we're going to get the replay out to everybody, so you guys will all be able to see that in um, you know 720p definition. So just rest assured you will get it. And, uh, Damon, how long is this offer going to be open? Uh, and that's a great question. We are going into a launch period, uh, December 4th. 15th through December 19th. Okay. And at the end of that, that lifetime edition is going to change to annual and we're going to bump the price up probably 20 to $30 per, per version. So if you get it now, you only have to pay for it once. If you get it uh, after the 20th, you get to pay for it every year. Okay. But I still think it's a great value even every year at $97 a year. Yeah, um, you know, there, there was another RSS program that we had um, called Rank Feeder by Lisa Allen, which is really good. It's more for SEO purposes than anything, like what we were just mentioning, our Advanced RSS Academy is. Um, and that comes with a, a monthly cost, guys, you know, and, and I'm, I'm assuming eventually this will as well. Um, Damon, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, now's a good time, guys. Um, I, I, so I guess just up until launch period, this offer will be open to our list. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. That's good to know. 
All right, guys, uh, let me just do one more check. Kurt says, can a WordPress site be built with a program to rank on Google Maps for local? Mm, I don't know. That would be difficult because it's not the site typically that will rank in Google Maps. It's a combination of the site and the Google My Business profile, um, like the page and all that. So it would require – I'd have to think about that one, Kurt. There might be a way to work that in because with the hook section, you could work citations. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just thought of that. With the hook section, you could work in citations directly into other people's posts. <laughs> yeah, with embed maps and everything. I'm, I mean, you're not limited to one line. You could put multiple lines in on the hooks. That's so in that WYSIWYG editor part of the hook section, you can actually put an iframe in there? You can. I know you could put images. I saw that. But can yeah. you, and links. But can you actually put an iframe? Because if not, is that something you could work into there? Because that would make it super powerful for map embeds. Let's see here. If you can do an iframe in there, man, I mean that that then we could answer this as a yeah. It, it's very possible to rank in the three pack if we can get that in there. Right now Definitely. we don't. We actually there there's a inline on code. You can actually put code inside of that. We'll have to play with that. I can test that. Yeah. It, I'm gonna make a note of that. Yeah, just go to formats and slide it down to inline, and then there's code. We, we, the original versions that we had, we, you could do anything with HTML, and it would completely crash it. So um, that's why we simplified this version. But definitely uh, try it out because that's a yeah. great idea. I just made a note of it, guys. I'm going to test that out before the webinar on the 21st, uh, see if we can get that working. And Damon, I'll let you know if I'm having any issues with it. Maybe we can we can make that happen because that would be super powerful for local. I hadn't even thought about that aspect. So, Kurt, thanks for bringing that up, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Mark, were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, Bruce has a question. Bruce says, could something like this replace what IFTTT does is at a basic level? No, because IFTTT is your syndication uh, right. application, right? You, like w IFTTT is, will monitor the feed. When it detects a new item, it – it publishes or it, it uh, the app then republishes that content to your channels or your now they're called services in IFTTT, which your services are like Blogger, WordPress, Tumblr, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so it won't replace IFTTT, but like Damon mentioned, he uses SendWire a lot as his trigger point or syndication point. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, it looks like we're done. Any uh, parting words, Damon? No. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And happy holidays to everybody. Yeah, you too, man. And we'll see you Same in two weeks. Take care. Okay. We'll, we'll see you in two weeks, actually. So, and, uh, and Damon, I'll reach out to you if I have any questions about that. But uh, let's try to work that out because I think that would be pretty powerful. Okay. Thanks, Bradley. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. Bye.